Senator Rand Paul going after Donald Trump, one of the more heated moments from last night's debate. And that was not the only tense moment. Uh, time to look now at the winners and losers and maybe who fought to a draw. Mark Thiessen, columnist for The Washington Post and a Fox News contributor. Nice to see you. Good to be with Thanks you. Thanks for working long hours for us here My pleasure, in Cleveland. Absolutely. Let's Great start evening. with the winners. How do you score it? Well, first, there are a lot of winners to choose from, so it's really, really hard. I think a lot of people did very well. I mean, the obvious winners are Bush and Walker because they were in the lead, so they didn't need to hit home runs. Uh, and they both put in strong performances, especially Walker, I think, had a great moment when he uh, took on Hill, jumped in and took on Hillary Clinton, which I think there was not enough of that in the debate. Uh, the other big winner, I think, was Chris Christie uh, because he was on the mat. Uh, and he's the guy who got up off the mat and put in a really strong performance. I think his exchanges with uh, Rand Paul and with Huckabee, uh, where he, had, he was the only one who was actually debating. <laughs> and, you know, those, 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 those uh, tips that he had were very good, and I think he came out on top of all those. And then the number one winner, I think, however, was not on the stage last night. It was Carly Fiorina. I mean, everyone was saying, you know, this isn't a, this isn't a fake debate. This, somebody's going to emerge from this. And people were sort of skeptical of that. I think she emerged as the biggest winner of the night last night. She's a smart, articulate female Donald Trump. Mm. Very interesting. <laughs> so let's listen to uh, Charles Krauthammer for a moment uh, and what he had to say about the outcome of last night. And then we'll get your thoughts on that. Sure. The real story is, is the collapse of Trump. He was lost for most of the debate. And I think it showed that th he was in a group of professional politicians whom he mocks, and yet they as a group and individually were able to handle it and to be sharp and persuasive most of the time, but they left him out in the cold. All right, Mark. So Charles basically saying that uh, he was out of his league that he was with professional politicians who left him out in the cold, as you just heard, and that it was we witnessed the collapse of Donald Trump last night. Do you agree? I agree 100 percent with Charles. I think Trump had a really, really bad night. Uh, first of all, getting booed first thing out of the box by the entire stadium uh, when he said he wouldn't run as a third party candidate. I mean, wouldn't refuse to say he wouldn't run as a third party candidate. I think that's pretty bad. And then the tip he got into with Megan last night uh, when she called him on some of his misogynistic comments and tweets and actually not just not just defending them, but attacking her. I think that's a really bad, uh, bad uh, result. I think Donald Trump is trying to show us that you can win the presidency without any women's vote. He was tweeting about <laughs> Megan earlier today. Yeah, yeah. I think at 4:30 oh, yeah. in the morning. Yes. Yeah. But but when you suggest that he was at that moment, yeah. that was the beginning of the two hours. Yeah. Do you think the the mood changed toward him? Here we're inside the arena. I, th I think that there's a segment of the Republican uh, uh, electorate that loves Donald Trump, and no matter what he said last night, is going is to love him. The question is, can he reach above that? Can he get past that 20, 25 percent? I mean, if he he's got 25 percent support, that means 75 percent of Republicans are not are not in favor of him. They're in favor of somebody else. And look, when you're when you're tweeting about the moderator in a fight with the moderator, if you're fighting with the moderator in a presidential debate, you're losing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he also revealed last night. Uh, sort of how the sausage is made in his uh, multi-billion dollar fortune, which yeah. I, I think a lot of people respect uh, that sort of American spirit and entrepreneurship and the fact that he has done so well. But he revealed a lot of things about bankruptcy, about paying people, and then they do stuff for you in return. I'm not sure that helped him last night, Mark. No, it made him seem like a part of the uh, part of the establishment and the culture that needs to be bro that that he's running against essentially. And look, the fact that he said, you know, when they asked when he was asked, "What did you get for all that money that you gave?" and he said, "I got Hillary Clinton to come to my wedding." I mean, come on, that's ridiculous. You know, nobody spends millions of dollars to get Hillary. Clinton. If you're Apparently spending millions of dollars that. to get Hillary Clinton, there's something wrong with your priorities. So then you have to find out what you got on the gift registry. Yeah. yeah. What are we leaving out? What, so, what, what are we overlooking? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, th I think there was, it's hard because there were so many really good moments. I think Marco Rubio had a great night. Uh, and there, were, there were a lot of, I think Ted Cruz did, did to, to a that well. point, then, Mark, see how things marinate over the weekend. Because yeah. as we were talking about a few moments ago, sometimes it takes a couple of days yeah. before you start to pick up on the story. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think the big story coming out of this weekend as it marinates is going to be Carly Fiorina. I predict that she'll be on the main stage for the next, uh, for the next wow. debate. What about Rand Paul? Winner or loser? Quickly. Oh, big loser. I mean, yeah. look, the, first of all, he got his clock clean by Chris Christie on that exchange about terrorism. And look, the reality is, is that perhaps, he has a, but he's appealing to a certain voter. Very small. And, and if you listen to the arguments as they went back and forth, you can see the points they were making.
Yeah. That, that, that was a legitimate debate point. Right? It was. It was a legitimate debate. But the, I think this is not an isolationist moment in the Republican Party. There's a poll out a few months ago. 72% of Republicans want to put ground forces in Iraq. So that's the absolute opposite of what Rand Paul's philosophy is. So I think and his Lindsey Graham's going to win this election. <laughs> I mean, he, he made him, that, is his, that is his number one platform. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more later. But sure. Yeah, very nice interesting. Nice to see you, Mark. Mark, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks so much. Great having you with us this morning.